If a tree falls in a far and remote forest, and nobody, not even a single animal, is around to hear it, does it make a sound? This question has been asked quite a few times over the years. Actually, the first known formulation of this question was written back in 1883 in the Chautauquan, an educational magazine. Its popularity is probably due to its publication in the well-known Scientific American one year later. Which is a bit weird as it is normally considered a philosophical question. And it is. Well, kind of. You see, in science there's a saying called Newton's flaming laser sword, stating what cannot be settled by experiment is not worth debating. So according to this saying, this question should not be part of the scientific debate. Boring. Well, it is true that this question cannot be directly answered by the scientific method. It is also true that it can be indirectly answered by scientific theories, such as, I don't know, physics, which gives you a hint about where this video is heading. But let's get through the basic stuff first. Sound. What is sound? To summarize, sound can be described both as a sensation or a vibration. From a purely physical standpoint, sound is a mechanical wave propagating through a medium, usually air, basically a vibration of air molecules. The problem is, you don't directly experience a vibration per se, but rather an interpretation of this vibration by your brain. So sound as you think it is, is a perception, and a perception only exists if one is there to perceive it. Following this logic, the tree falls, no brain is around to translate the vibration into sound, therefore the tree makes no sound. Boring. Alright, alright, we're gonna go a little bit further than that, and by a little bit I mean quite a lot. Warning, we're gonna think way too much about this. Doing so, we're gonna use a bit of quantum mechanics. Don't worry, everything's gonna be fine. Okay, first. What the problem really implies is that the tree has no observer. Now what is an observer? It's quite simple. If you are receiving any amount of information from a given phenomenon, you are an observer of this phenomenon. Now this implies more than you might think. In order for something to have no observer, it needs to be perfectly isolated. The simple fact that you are touching something that is touching something that is touching something that is touching a thing makes you a very indirect but still an observer of this thing. Now let's get into the interesting part. You might think that things behave the same if you don't observe them, but you'd be wrong. Here's an example with a particle. Let's say that we know there is a particle in a certain area but we don't know where exactly. Until we measure it, this particle will behave like it's at every possible position at the same time. More accurately, and just for the sake of knowledge, it becomes a wave function representing the probability of every possible position. Measuring the particle will make the wave function collapse onto a single random position. Although hard to believe, this principle called quantum superposition is real and well known in physics. Some of you might have heard of Schrodinger's cat. Well, this is the exact same principle with a more concrete example. Quantum superposition happens all the time in the microscopic world. However, it practically never occurs with everyday objects because these are virtually impossible to isolate from their surroundings. And this is the reason why it probably seems extremely abstract to you. If you are having some problems believing me or understanding what I just said, I put some link in the description below. Back to the tree. Is it possible to perfectly isolate the tree so that it doesn't have any observer? On Earth? Nah. But I told you, we we're gonna think way too much about this. So let's imagine a falling tree on a planet, surrounded by a vacuum so large that light from any other star in the universe didn't have time to reach it. We can fairly say that this tree has no observer. By the way, if the universe is infinite, it is certain that such a tree exists somewhere. Now back to the ultimate question. 
Does it make a sound? Well, knowing all that we've seen so far, we can say that the question itself doesn't make any sense. A bit like a paradox. If nobody is around to observe the tree, it doesn't make any sense to say that it is falling or not falling, it is in every state at once. It is both falling and not falling, making sound and not making sound. So next time you hear this question, please answer this for me. The question is flawed. If nobody is observing the tree, it is therefore a wave function representing every possible state of this tree at once, one of which is a falling tree. However, this possibility requires an observation in order to exist on its own. Congratulations, you've now become a perfectly annoying know-it-all. Thanks for watching.